Hey guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you my recipe for homemade kiss cakes, orange cream kiss cakes. Now these really need no introduction, but if you don't know what a kiss cake is, they are a better, much better version than a hostess cupcake. They are so much more fresher in flavor and so much more tastier. They actually taste real as opposed to like fake plasticky cupcakes. Let's go ahead and get started. In my bowl here I have some unsalted butter that is really nice and soft at room temperature as well as some granulated sugar. We're gonna go ahead and start creaming this together really well for about five minutes and after each minute I'm going to go in with my spatula and run it around the edge of my bowl and bring it back in the center just to make sure that this is becoming really nice and smooth and creamy and you really want to go ahead and just mix this for about five minutes and after each minute just go ahead with your spatula and scrape around the edges to make sure everything is getting incorporated now after that five minutes, the consistency of this is already starting to be really nice and fluffy and smooth and the sugar and the butter are pretty much one with each other. I'm going to go ahead and add in my eggs one at a time and then mix together. So after I've added in my first egg, I'm just going to go ahead and incorporate my egg and then I'm going to go ahead and add in my second large egg. And just mix that until it's fully incorporated with all of the ingredients. And of course, everything will be listed below in the description box for you guys. So after just mixing that all together and incorporating that really well, we're going to go ahead and add in our vanilla extract. You can also use vanilla bean paste in this, which was really good. Brings out that vanilla flavor, as well as some sour cream. Add that in and of course we're just going to go ahead and mix all of those things together. So after we've got that nice and creamy we're going to go ahead and add in the zest of an orange. You really want to get that orange flavor in here because it is of course orange cream kiss cakes. I'm going to mix that together, get my spatula and run everything around the edges and the sides, make sure everything is getting incorporated. Now let's move over to our dry ingredients. I have some all-purpose flour, some baking powder, and baking soda and salt, and I'm going to go ahead and sift these together. And I also, we're going to need some buttermilk. Now what I like to use is just regular whole milk with a splash of vinegar and let it sit for about 10 minutes to make my own buttermilk you can of course use store-bought and we're going to alternate with our flour and our milk into our mixture so I'm going to add in half of my flour and half of my milk to my butter and sugar and then we're going to just mix this until mostly combined then we're going to add in the next half of our flour and the next half of our milk and then mix that until it's mostly combined Just mix all those, and when I'm mixing, making a cake, I really don't like to overwork my flour, so I'm just going to mix this until mostly combined and then finish it off with my spatula. So get my spatula in there and run it around the edges and the sides, and then just work it in, make sure everything gets fully incorporated. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees, as well as I have a cupcake pan, muffin pan, whatever you call it, and I've sprayed that with nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to get an ice cream scoop and I'm going to scoop in one scoopful of batter. Um, I'm going to scoop in that and then you can also use about a quarter cup measurement, should work fine. And these are going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. Depending on your oven, you want to check on them about 20 minutes or so. Let's get started on our filling. Now into a heat safe bowl, I have some egg whites that are room temperature. And to that I'm going to go ahead and add in some granulated sugar. as well as a pinch of salt, a pinch of salt, and then we're going to go ahead and add in some light corn syrup, and also a splash of water. Again, all the amounts are in the description box for you guys. We're just going to go ahead and take our mixer, and we're going to mix this until everything is combined. 
I also have a small pot, a small saucepan with some water that is coming up to a boil. So once these ingredients are nice and completely and totally incorporated, we're going to take our bowl, make sure that it's heat proof, heat safe, and we're going to place it on top of our saucepan, making sure that the bottom of the bowl is not touching the actual water in the saucepan. So there's my boiling water. I'm going to place my bowl on top of it, making sure the bottom is not touching the water. So add just enough water just for it to come up to a boil and we're going to take our mixer and we're going to beat this for five minutes. It's going to double in size, it's going to become really thick and lovely and creamy and just absolutely beautiful. Now if you want to take the easy route, what you can do is just get uh, marshmallow fluff, which is really easy to find these days. You can use one equal part marshmallow fluff and one equal part vanilla buttercream frosting and mix them together if you want to go the easy way. But I'm going to show you guys from scratch how to make your homemade marshmallow cream. So we're mixing this together in five minutes on the heat. I'm going to remove it from the heat, add in some vanilla extract, and then mix it for two minutes until it thickens up even more. So just going to mix that for an extra two minutes off the heat removed it completely from the saucepan, mix it for two minutes. Now you have to wait for this to completely cool before using it, as well as you want to make sure that your cupcakes are completely cooled before filling it and glazing it. After two minutes, this is so beautiful. It holds its shapes beautifully and it's going to be so delicious in the center of our cupcakes. Now let's get started on our ganache topping. I'm using some white chocolate melts here, and to that I'm going to add in some heavy cream. I'm going to pop this in a microwave for about 30 to 45 seconds or so until mostly melted, and then we're just going to go ahead and incorporate this. Um, mix these things together, mix the white chocolate melts as well as the heavy cream together, and we're going to set that aside to cool. You also want to make sure that your cupcakes are cooling and your filling is cooling. An easy way, you can also pop your ganache in the fridge for about 10 minutes or so to give it a quick, uh, you know, a head start. But you don't want to leave it in there for too long because it will firm up on you. And if it does firm up on you, just put it in the microwave for about 5 seconds. Now to our cupcakes, I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. We're going to take our cupcakes and turn it over on the bottom and use a knife and cut about an inch in diameter circle inside and an inch into the cupcake. The easiest way that I found is actually a tip online, no pun intended, I'm using a tip here to um, fill the cupcakes and I find it to be the best way. You take your tip, you place it into your center of your cupcake a half of an inch down. I'm going to take my knife and finish off with another half of an inch really to get one whole inch into the cupcake as well as you want to get some around the sides as well. So we want a really nice well so we can place our filling inside. I'm going to take a knife and remove that bottom part out of the tip. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and take my tip and insert it into the center of my cupcake. Go about a half of an inch into the cupcake with the tip and remove it out. Then I'm going to hollow out the rest of a half of an inch with my knife. And making sure, you want to make sure and get some of the sides as well. Get that out so we have a nice little well to fill our cupcakes. So we have a good amount of filling and a good amount of cake. Perfect ratio. We're going to keep those little ends there because we're going to cover these back up. Now into one piping bag, you can also use a Ziploc bag, I'm going to go ahead and place in my filling that has been cooled. And I'm just going to use any large tip here. You can even just, just snip the tip off the bottom of your bag. And my ganache that is nice and cooled. I'm going to take a quarter part of my ganache topping and set that aside. That's going to be for our squiggly lines. And I'm going to add some pink food coloring to the rest. Mix in my food coloring there. I don't want to use too much food coloring for it, so just a couple drops will do. And now we're just going to really assemble these together now. Really simple. I'm going to also take that remaining bit of ganache and put it in another piping bag, or you can just use a Ziploc bag. And if you're not going to use a tip for this, you want to cut a very small hole at the tip of your Ziploc bag. Now I really suggest these are best served fresh. If you want to um, make kind of head start on these, I suggest making the cupcakes the day before. You can even make the filling the day before, but I, I suggest um, filling them and doing everything because they are best served fresh and nice and filled. You can get the real good effect of these cupcakes. 
I'm going to fill up my cupcakes, but I do not want to fill all the way up. I'm just going to leave like a smidgen of room so I can place in my little topper here. Topper, even though it's at the bottom of the cupcake. I don't know, but just put that back on. And I'm just going to continue on filling them and closing them back up. And then we're just going to go ahead and start putting our ganache topping on them. If you do put a little bit too much of your filling in there, just get a knife and even it off before placing your topper back on. Now our nice ganache, like I said, if it does firm up in you a little bit too much, pop it in the microwave for five seconds just so it's nice and runny again. So good consistency that we can just take our cupcakes and dunk it in there, give it a little swirl around. And then just try to even it off either with the back of a spoon or you can use a spatula. And set those aside. I'm just going to continue on with these here and then we're going to get our white ganache that we set aside to make our nice little swirly line. So you can see I'm just using a spatula here just to get it on. Now these are homemade. These are not factory made. They're not meant to be factory made. They're fresh and delicious and they're good food. Know what's going in them. No real, no real preservatives or any of that in there. So it's meant to be homemade which I love about that. So finish it up here and then we're gonna go ahead and put our little swirly lines on. Now it doesn't have to be perfect again, like I said, it's homemade, so just go ahead and make little ease. I find that that's what it kinda looks like, like little ease swirly lines on there. About six to seven, or you can probably even get eight on each cupcake, depending on how big your cupcakes are. And that is pretty much it. Just finish assembling these. And like I said, these are best served fresh. Um, I will have all the amounts in the description box for you guys, but Kiss Cakes, like I said, are so much better than Hostess Cupcakes. They're delicious. The orange flavor in these cupcakes really are running through. That filling is sweet and just, it's just the perfect blend of cupcake filling. Everything just works so beautifully. I hope that you give this recipe a try. They're delicious and this is a great project to do with little ones. They will have a lot of fun, trust me. My little one did. <laughs> making a mess on these cupcakes but hey that's what it's all about and that's what's so enjoyable about doing these things at home i hope that you guys enjoy this recipe don't forget to like share and subscribe and i will see you guys next time